I'm Nathan Ponchard, this is Chasing Cars, and this is the 2021 facelifted Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross. You might be wondering why, when it's only three years old, has this car already been facelifted? And I suppose the main reason for that is that it hasn't quite been the success that Mitsubishi wanted it to be. In fact, you might be surprised to know that this was meant to be the new ASX, given that that car's from 2009, and this was first shown in 2017 which kind of makes sense. Hence why they flogged it as a coupe SUV, which it no longer is. So in the facelifted version, it is 140 millimeters longer than before. And when we get around to the rear, you'll see why part of that length has been expanded. At the front here, we have a new dynamic shield grille, which is meant to express something like it being more powerful as an SUV while protecting passengers inside, which is, you know, usual styling wank. The whole theme of the car, in fact, is called Daring Grace, whatever that means, but it does look better. I actually think, and we'll notice as we walk around the Eclipse Cross, that it has sort of grown into itself. I think the front and back being a little bit longer makes the midsection look a little bit better. This one here is an Exceed, which is the absolute top of the line car and in an all wheel drive form, which as we'll also discover is the one to buy. At the front here, it has quite different styling to the other cars. The base models have this done in silver, except for the absolute base ES where it's black and have these in a different color. Whereas the Exceed color codes everything. So all of this is red. In this case, Red Diamond is what it's called, which is a $940 option. There's also a new color called White Diamond, which I actually thought was Liz Taylor's perfume, but it turns out it's also a color for Mitsubishi. It's also 940 bucks. Hopefully it looks a bit better than this one because even though the red diamond on the metal is beautiful, the red diamond on the bumpers is very orange peely. And these two here don't even quite match in color, but whatever, it's meant to be a inexpensive car, right? Coming around to the side here, we have eight and inch wheels on this Exceed, but eight and inch wheels are fitted to every Eclipse Cross in Australia, not the tiny little hideous alloys they get in Europe. Uh, these have 205, 55, 18 Toyo Proxies tires, which are okay. Uh, thanks for the all drive. Um, and when we come around to the side here, all of this stuff on the Exceed is color coded here as well. I think the aim of it was to make it look a bit chunkier, a little bit more luxe. And if you can see on the top here, it also has a dual paint sunroof that's all black which uh, does give it a bit more of a posh looking feel. At the back here, there's another one of those styling things where they claim that this hexagonal thing here is meant to give the illusion of a tack on spare tire like a proper SUV, which is a massive wank. It doesn't look like that at all. What it does is replace the old double glass window tailgate, which kind of looked a little bit like an old Honda CRX's and makes it this more traditional look. That also expands the back of the car. In fact, the overall length in the Eclipse Cross is 140 millimeters longer than before, even though all the middle's the same. Uh, I do like these new lights. It has this cool little thing that runs all the way up here. And so at night time, it gives it this quite cool look that's much nicer than a Pajero Sport. Thank God. We've got a clips cross lettering across the back here, which you can also option on the front, although I then looks dorky on the front. And in the boot here with no electric tailgate, we have 405 litres. Now, before you could change it from 355 to 460 something because the back seat was on a slider. But now that the tailgate's a little bit further back and Mitsubishi thinks that it's been right sized, the boot is 405 litres and it's a pretty good boot. Underneath the floor here, we have a space saver spare. Uh, you can tell that some models might not have that because the floor is actually lower than that around the side. And when you drop the backrest flat, even with this floor at this height, they still don't quite go flat. I'm not particularly tall, 177, eight centimeters, something like that. My head is almost touching the bottom of the tailgate here. So anyone that's tall would need to be fairly careful when they're walking into it. It's also not light to close, but I suppose it does make it feel Solid. Inside the Eclipse Cross, Mitsubishi has changed what needed to be changed, particularly this center touch screen here. Now it used to sit at the back here, you can see where it goes back on the dash and was lower and wider and was controlled by a 
touchpad here that was really annoying and just, well, crap. Now it is much closer to the driver. It actually looks quite good the way it has this sort of matte black surround on it. Uh, it's only eight inches, but I think most people think that eight inches is enough. And uh, the knobs here are really useful to have. None of this touch slide rubbish uh, in the Exceed and in the model below it, which is called Aspire. It has eight speakers, 510 watts, and Mitsubishi claims that the sound of it has been tuned for the Eclipse Crosses cabin, but I suppose that any manufacturer would say that. It actually sounds really good. Uh, the bass isn't probably quite as strong as you'd want it to be, but particularly with Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, and perhaps not Mitsubishi's own graphics here, which are better than they used to be, but still not exactly luxe. Um, it works really well. Down here you have two very obviously to locate USB plugs. You also have a 12 volt outlet. There's also a steering heater button over here, which is kind of odd. It does have dual zone climate control in this car. We also have adaptive cruise control over here, shift paddles on the steering wheel, piano black on the steering wheel with leather, which is what most models have except for the ES. And down here is also where the big difference is. We now have electric park brake with an auto hold, the uh, all-wheel drive button which changes between normal snow and gravel, the seat heating switches and the transmission selector for the CVT. They have two cup holders here which are really useful for a coffee, um, a padded armrest here which is reasonably well padded but doesn't slide forward and inside here when you start to look at this stuff it's got this sort of slightly flock lined little thing and it's carpeted but there's the carpet. It, comes out. The deeper that you look, the more that you notice that the Eclipse Cross isn't perhaps the most plush car in its class, it's a, but it does have a lot of features. Uh, one of the things that I find a little bit infuriating about it is all of this silver. It looks like it might have been done at home. Uh, it also rubs against your knee when you're driving here, which is a little bit annoying. A little bit of padding would have been much more preferable than an excess of 90s Arnett Sunny Silver, which is what I think it is. The doors have really good door grips though, even though they've got more silver on them. And you can fit a full bottle, like a full one litre bottle into the door, which is great. The driving position in the Exceed is really good too. It has an eight way power driver's seat. It also has an eight way power passenger seat. And you can sit pretty low. You've got a great view, lots of glass. In this case with the sunroof, you've got that above you as well. The steering wheel is really nice to hold. I suppose the only thing that I would want out of this more than what it offers is that it doesn't have any lumbar adjustment and you can feel that after a couple of hours that it might actually make the bottom of your back ache. One of the other good things about the Eclipse Cross is that it has a really usable back seat. I'm sitting nice and high here, not with amazing under thigh support but definitely enough and certainly for children I've got a really good view. I've also got this of a sunroof pane here, which is useful for making the cabin feel airy, especially in the Exceed with its anthracite roof lining. I've also got outboard seat heaters here and a 12 volt outlet down here, but no USBs for back passengers. And there's only tiny little door things for water bottles, 600 mil tops, that's it. Probably a can, although you might even spill it a bit because it's at an angle like that. Um, the backrest in this seat is a 10 position one. This one right now is a fair bit forward, but it can go back to here, which is pretty good. Uh, what it doesn't have that the old car had though, is it doesn't have runners on the floor. You can't adjust where the seat is. Mitsubishi has chosen a position that it thinks gives the best amount of leg room and tow room of which there is heaps and boot space of which there is still quite a lot. We also have an armrest here with another pair of cup holders. And yeah, I think for what is a small SUV, this is almost a medium level of room. Underneath the Eclipse Cross is Mitsubishi's GS platform, which has been around for 15 years and is shared with the ASX and the Outlander, hence why they all have the same wheelbase, which is kind of slightly odd. Uh, but what the Eclipse Cross did bring to the table in 2017-2018 was a brand new engine for Mitsubishi, potentially the last ever engine they're going to do completely on their own, which is a 1.5 litre turbocharged petrol four-cylinder tied to a CVT transmission that has stepped gates in it for a sort of a pseudo eight-speed. Now in Australia that engine continues to have 
110 kilowatts and 250 newton meters from 2,000 to 3,500 revs, which is competitive with what a Volkswagen Group engine of the same would have. But because it runs on 91, it only has 110, whereas the European one has 120 kilowatts. The performance claims for the European car is 0 to 100 in 9.7 seconds for the front drive CVT and 10.4 for the all wheel drive. And I thought, well, that feels a little bit quicker than that. And it kind of does at times. From a standing start, definitely in the all wheel drive, you have the traction for the engine and its torque and for the CVT to be able to give it a bit of thrust off the line. But once you're already doing 100 k's an hour or so, that's when the Eclipse Cross starts to expose the fact that it does weigh approaching 1600 kilos and 110 kilowatts ain't all that much in a 1600 kilo SUV. Uh, dynamically, the changes for 2021 are a rigidly mounted rear cross member and more linear steering. And the steering is quite linear. It's actually relatively smooth, although it's very light. And while it's reasonably accurate, I think the faster that you go in the car, the more that you kind of wish that it had more feel so you could place it a little bit better. Um, the suspension is the same. Uh, in urban speeds, in a normal cornering, it actually feels quite agile, especially with the all-wheel drive system. In fact, in particular with the all-wheel drive system, because in the front drive versions of this car, you often find that those Toyo tires scrabble for traction and can be frustrating, especially in the wet, with the CVT transmission and with all of that torque. Uh, the all-wheel drive one is the one to have, uh, but you do pay a $3,500 premium for it. Weirdly, it also has a lower payload than the front drive. It can only take 544 kilos instead of 609, although both have a 1600 kilo brake towing capacity, and it also uses slightly more fuel, 7.7 .7 liters per 100 versus 7.3, and it has a smaller fuel tank. It has a 60 liter tank instead of a 63 liter tank. So while all of those things sound like black marks against the all-wheel drive, the fact is, it's such a better car to drive that you would be mad to buy the front-wheel drive car unless you're buying the absolute base model and asking for minimal amounts of dynamic ability from your car. Uh, in terms of the overall dynamics of the Eclipse Cross, the ride is tolerable, definitely a lot better than the ASX's, although it is not saying much. Um, the handling again is pretty good and if you get the all-wheel drive in the right moment it can get really good kick out of corners and actually it feels quite chuckable and quite nicely balanced but ultimately it does feel like there's a big body sitting on top of sort of smallish wheels even though 18s are not small uh, and an old platform and so on paper you go yeah it's got a multi-link independent back end but I don't think any car on this platform has ever had proper ride quality and I don't think it's capable of achieving great handling with great ride. In fact probably the best riding car of the lot was an Evo 10 and it certainly didn't ride, it just happened to be very stiff and handle nicely. In terms of safety, the Exceed in particular has you know the works for this car which isn't heaps, it doesn't have lane assist, but it does have lane departure warning, it doesn't have blind spot monitoring either, but it does have rear cross traffic alert, it does have a front camera, uh, which is really good, it has a really good rear view camera as well, it has front and rear parking sensors, um, it also has the all drive system and active yaw control and a bunch of other bits and pieces, and it does a pretty good job of keeping itself together. One of the good things about this all drive CVT uh, setup is that it actually performs pretty good. And while the 1.5 turbo is not the most sonorous engine in the world, it's definitely quieter than the 1.5 turbo in a Honda Civic, for example, and the CVT is definitely better than Honda's. But at the end of the day, I suppose, I just wish that it had a little bit more va va -voom. Why don't we get the six-speed manual? That might be actually something quite good. And it can surely produce better power than 110 kilowatts. Uh, one engine that is coming though is the Eclipse Cross will get a FEV so it will get the same naturally aspirated four-cylinder and battery-driven drivetrain as the Outlander and I think that that will suit this car 
really nicely. There's a lot of room in the engine bay and obviously there's room under the car because it's the same platform and it should deliver massively better fuel number than 7.7 .7 .7 litres per 100 k's. The danger of buying a top model in the small SUV class is that it can be priced dangerously close to the best models in the medium SUV category. And that absolutely applies to the Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross Exceed all-wheel drive that we have here. This car is 43,990 drive away. And that's the offer from the manufacturer. That's $1,000 more than the Kia Seltos GT line that I recently said was also priced too far into the medium SUV category. You could get a Toyota RAV4 hybrid all-wheel drive, a GXL even, for less money or the same on road as this car. And I just think that that is overselling the ability of the Eclipse Cross. The best model in this car is definitely the all-wheel drive version. And you can get an LS, which is two steps below this Exceed, for just under 37,000 drive away. And that would really be the only one that I would consider. Uh, by the time you get here, I think you need to question whether having a dual pane sunroof and a heated rear seat and a heated steering wheel is really worth all of that extra money because it doesn't feel like a car that's that expensive. That said, it is a much nicer car than the ASX. It was meant to replace, remember? And so when you drive it, certainly in the city and driving around in general duties, especially in this all-wheel drive version, it has a pleasant reasonably holistic, fairly entertaining driving style and plenty of punch. But the more that you ask of it, the less it delivers. And I think that the lower you go in this range, the better off you are. If you haven't subscribed, please do so below the video, hit the notification bell and leave a comment on the Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross Exceed all-wheel drive or on chasing cars. Thanks for watching.